Civil rights leader James Leonard Fulmer Jr., son of Pearl and Dr. James L. Fulmer Sr., was born in 1920 in Marshall, Texas, where his father was a professor at Wiley College. The family moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and Austin, Texas, before returning to Marshall in 1930. At age 14, James Fulmer Jr. entered Wiley College and joined the famous debate team led by Melvin Tolson, which later became known as the Great Debaters. During that time, he was challenged with discussions about inequality. In 1938, Fulmer entered the ministerial program of Howard University in Washington, D.C., under the direction of Howard Thurman, a student of Mahatma Gandhi an advocate of nonviolent philosophy techniques to achieve social change. Inspired by Thurman and Tolson, Fulmer turned his attention to civil rights and moved to Chicago in 1941. In 1942, Fulmer co-founded the Congress of Racial Equality, known as CORE, which trained civil rights leaders in Gandhi-inspired nonviolent civil disobedience tactics to protest racial discrimination. Under his leadership, CORE organized the first sit-ins of restaurants in Chicago. In 1961, CORE organized the Freedom Rides into the Deep South, which were led by Fulmer. CORE, other organizations for equality, and James Fulmer Jr. were instrumental in the passage of the Civil Rights Act on July 2, 1964. In 1968, Fulmer ran unsuccessfully on the Liberal Party ticket, backed by the Republican Party, and was appointed Assistant Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare in 1969. Fulmer also worked as a union organizer and lecturer, as well as a professor at both Amherst College and Mary Washington College. In 1998, President Clinton awarded James Fulmer Jr. the Presidential Medal of Freedom Fulmer died on July 9th, 1999. He, he was comfortable in his own skin. He was not an arrogant man, but he saw not only his movement, but what he was doing being forgotten. He wanted to kill Jim Crow, and it had to be done with passive nonviolence. Violence would kill the whole movement. As long as he and others accepted that second-class citizenship, it would stay. But you had to keep that wound open, he said, until, until nobody was willing to accept second-class citizenship. We stand on the shoulders of greatness, and we keep that in our hearts. And, you know, whenever things are getting tough and things are getting hard for the team, we keep in mind that things were far worse in the past than what they are today, and he still made things happen. The Texas Historical Commission recognized that this is an undertold story. It should have been done 20 years ago, instead of the first Jim Palmer was my boss. In 1961, he had been my friend, and he is indeed my hero. It never occurred to me until several years later that he had not gotten the kind of recognition and adulation, historically adulation, that he so richly deserved. Thank you.